Hello, welcome to Well of Stories. My name is Melinda. Um, I have, this is the eighth video I have filmed today. Earlier today, I filmed seven videos because I had gotten my hair done and it looked nice and I wanted to, to take advantage of it and I thought I was done. And then um, tonight, I went to watch some, some YouTube videos and the first one I clicked on was a video from Elizabeth at Books and Bocadillos called Thinking of Alice. I don't think anything about it. Could be Alice in Wonderland. Could be Alice my cat. I don't know. Um, I don't check my community page as much as I should. Well, in this video, she said um, that booktuber Alice of Alice in the Giant Bookshelf had passed. Um, <laughs> terriers. Um, Alice is, well, we've lost a number of booktubers recently within the past year and it's always sad. It is always sad, but Alice is the first one that has passed that I kind of had a relationship with, that I followed actually, let's even start there. I didn't even know the other ones who had passed, but um, Alice passed. Um, I did know Alice. Um, Alice, once I got on booktube and started going, Alice was one of the first um, booktubers that I, I started, that I kind of found once I was in the booktube community. She and I had very similar reading tastes. We both really like mysteries and uh, we both kind of bonded over uh, Ruth Galloway by Ellie Griffiths. Um, which ironically is not on this thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just found out, like I watched, the, uh, Elizabeth's video and in that video she said that a few years ago Alice had created um, a book tag called the Hercule Perot book tag and it would be a nice tribute to get this going again so I thought mission accepted <laughs> and I printed it out I am not at my computer right now um, my son is watching God knows what I tried to film upstairs my husband walked in in the middle of it so I'm in the backyard you're gonna hear the neighbor's dogs I'm sorry I'm doing the best I can um, but I printed out the the, the um, prompts and I pulled some books and um, oh sorry and I moved my camera <laughs> and we're gonna do this so this is the Hercule Poirot mystery book tag and this is for Alice of Alice and the Giant Bookshelf um, one thing I have forgotten is my little jar with my people to tag but I will tag people at the end because we need to get this going for Alice. Alice left quite a um quite an impact on booktube so first the first prompt there are 10 prompts. The first one Hercule Perrault is a detective who is extremely proud of his achievements. In the mystery of the blue train he announced my name is Hercule Poirot and I am probably the greatest detective in the world. If not Perrault who is, a, who is your favorite detective? And what book do you recommend featuring your favorites? And that one was really easy. My favorite detective, even more so than Hercule Poirot, is our And um, you do need to read, and this is the three, this is the Three Pines books from um, Louise Penny. You do need to read them in order, which makes the fact that I am recommending the 18th book in the series a little bit difficult. <laughs> Um, but this is this is my favorite in the series. It's very dark, um, especially compared to some of the other ones. And dark things do happen in her books, and this is significantly darker. Um, but Louise Penny is very good at getting into human psyche and character, and she does that very, very well here. Um, this book took my breath away. I highly recommend it. Just read the 17 books that came before it first. But yeah, Armand Gamache is my favorite detective. Two, Hercule Poirot famously uses his little gray says, I should have my mug that says, uh, I don't know, I have a, a Poirot mug. I should, I should have worn it, but you know, spur of the moment. And also it's 8.30 at night and I'm not going to be drinking coffee, but. Hercule Poirot famously uses his little gray cells to solve cases. Have you ever solved an Agatha Christie mystery? If yes, which one? I think there were a few that I figured out right before the reveal, but there was only one, what's this one, that I figured out far too early. In, in my own opinion, it was far too early. And that is Halloween Party by Agatha Christie. This is the second, I believe the second to last book that she wrote. The final two books she wrote that were released posthumously were actually written like 30 years earlier. They were written during World War II and that's the final Perot and the final Marvel. So take those, she, this is the second to last one she wrote. Um, and she was dealing with a little bit of decline 
and it, it shows this is not a tight book. Um, there's things that don't need to be in this book. There's things that don't make sense. Um, I, I personally think if you're gonna take a book and totally obliterate it and take little tiny things out of it and make a movie and set it in Venice and Halloween, that's probably the best one to do. <laughs> because, but uh, yeah. This is the one that I only, the first one that I've read so far. Now, I have not read a lot of her later ones. But this is the first one I've read so far that kind of was a disappointment because I figured it out too early. But Halloween party. Prompt three. The Mysterious Affair at Styles is the introduction to Hercule Poirot. Recommend a first book in a series where you met one of your favorite characters. Um, you knew this was coming and I'm just going to show you this if you can see it. It's blurred by Louise Penny. But it's William Ken Kruger. <laughs> Um, this is the first in the Cork O'Connor series. Um, this book, uh, this is the 20th anniversary edition, and so it's over 20 years old. The 20th book in this series is coming out um, in two months. Um, this is where we meet Cork O'Connor. We meet him. He's not in a great point in his life. He is separated. Um, he was the sheriff of a town, and something happened, and he had to, to leave his post. And he's, like, living in this, this hut and selling burgers. But the series follows him. Uh, he becomes a private detective and he starts solving crimes. This is a little bit more thrillerish, so there's more action um, and it has a little more of a thriller pace, but they are still mysteries. Um, this copy I got from my father-in-law for Yola Book of Flood this last year and he read it while he was down here for Christmas and then left it for me so I can put it on my keeper shelf and he's gonna get the second book this year. <laughs> okay. Uh, prompt four, Murder on the Orient Express. Agatha Christie wrote several pro Poirot books set on different types of transport. What is your favorite mystery set on a train, plane, or boat? And I'm going to have to go back to Agatha Christie for this one. And that is Death on the Nile. Um, I read this book kind of out of publication order as I did Halloween Party and a couple other books. I read it because I knew the movie was coming out. Um, I really liked this mystery. <laughs> I really enjoyed this mystery. Did not particularly like the movie, the Brana movie version. I think there's some really um, crucial little things in this book that really make it that Brana, for reasons I don't understand, left out. Um, but this is a really, and it's like Louise Penny, this one really gets into human psyche more than many of Agatha Christie's other books, um, which I think is why I like it so much. But uh, yeah, so Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie, very atmospheric. Okay. Number six, the ABC murders feature a killer working their way through an alphabet of victims. Uh, recommend a mystery involving a serial killer. I had to think about this one, um, and then it came to me. And it's a book that I read many years ago, but it's been made into a TV series. Um, I didn't watch all the TV series because this is not really something I want to watch on television. <laughs> but this is The Alienist by Caleb Carr, and it is based on a real-life serial killer um, named Albert fish. I think that's what I wrote. I can't really read my writing. But it's set um, around the turn of the 20th century and there is a serial killer um, and loose in New York and they gotta find him and he does really nasty things. Um, there is a cameo by the police chief Theodore Roosevelt in it, which is a lot of fun. But this was a very suspenseful, very well done mystery. Um, it is a little hard and dark at times, so you gotta be okay with that. There's like gore and awful things that happen in it but it's done with the respect needed for it um but yeah that's that was really the only serial killer one i could think of i'm sure there are other ones but as i said i i just watched this video and watched elizabeth's video watched the tag video doing the tag <laughs> okay okay six dumb witness which actually is right here recommend a book where an animal helps oh wait dumb witness bob the dog uh, helps Perot's investigation in this one. Can you recommend a book where an animal helps solve the case? I don't know if the animal actually helps solve the case in this one, um, but the animal plays a big part. And this is a, a book by Alice Henderson. She has a series, and this is uh, the first in the series. It's A Solitude of Wolverines. And um, the the main, who's not a detective, but the te detective-like person, is actually a wildlife researcher, and she's off researching populations of wolverines. Um, there are currently three books in the series. So it's Wolverines is the first one. And I've never felt more sympathy for a little mean furry thing that can kill you than I did in that book. There's also weird, like there's a point in this book where something very weird happens. And you have to be able to just keep reading past that because it does make sense. But it is so weird when it happens. You're like, what? <laughs> but if you read past it, it makes sense. Um, 
but the first book is A Solitude of Wolverines, and then there's A Blizzard of Polar Bears, which made me want to go to the Arctic, <laughs> and then the third one, which is on my Kobo, and I have not read, is The Ghost of Caribou, which is about caribou, so she's really into the animals. And I'm sure if, if you read the cat books, whoever wrote those cat books, they would do it too, but I'm going for Wolverines. Okay. <sighs> Seven, five little pigs. Poirot solved several cases in his time that have been closed for years. Which is your favorite cold case Poirot? Now, I, I didn't come up with a cold case Poirot, and I think there are a number of pros that I haven't gotten to that are cold case. But I did think of another cold case book that I actually really liked. I was surprised at how much I liked this book. I don't know if you'd really consider it a mystery as much as you would a horror. Um, I think it's usually considered horror, but it's by Simone St. James, and it's The Broken Girls. It's probably my favorite of her books. And in it, there is something that happened 50 or some years before that they end up in the midst of this figuring out. Um, there is horror, it is a horror book. So there's a mystery element to this horror book, but it is a horror novel. And Simone St. James can make it, can creep you out, which is what I like in horror books. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think Alice was much of a horror reader, but um, that was, that was one I came up with. <laughs> okay. Uh, number eight, Dead Man's Folly. Uh, Dead Man's Folly is famously set in Christie's own holiday home, Greenway. What is your favorite murder mystery setting? And I'm going to go back to Louise Penny and Three Pines. I want to live in Three Pines. I want to live there. I know that there is like a uh, disproportionate number of murders. I don't care. I want to live there. I want to have dinner parties. I want to hang out in the bookstore. And if I can't live there, I want to live in Aurora, Minnesota and the Boundary Waters and go kayaking and um, eat. Lefsa. <laughs> so yeah, really, this is my first choice. This is my second choice. <laughs> so yeah, I've always, that's always been my dream to live, to live in Three Pines, which doesn't exist, but there you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, number nine, do you have a favorite Perot mystery? If not, tell us a favorite mystery you've read recently. So this is not necessarily my favorite Perot mystery, but it's my favorite mystery. It's my favorite Perot in a mystery, if that makes sense. Um, I enjoy Perot the most in this one, and that's Dumb Witness. Um, he just he's he's got a lot more character in this book. Some people complain that it's not in character character, but I don't care. I still liked it. I thought it was lovely and fun and kind of like saucy. This is preceded by a couple books where I felt that. Um, we needed some more Perot than we actually had. So this was a nice change to have a lot of Perot in with this one. So not my favorite Perot novel, but my favorite Perot in a novel. <laughs> okay. And finally, 10. How many Perot books have you read? I have read uh, 23 of them. So I am reading Agatha Christie's Her Oeuvre in roughly... Um, publication order, although I jump around a couple times. Um, actually, I might have read 24. There's, I can't remember Hercule Perrault's Christmas Falls. So I've read up to 22, and then I have read Halloween Party, and I can't remember. Let's see here. Sad Cypress. Oh, well, so I've read 22 because, uh, Hercules Pro's Christmas is right before Sad Cypress. And the last one I read was Sad Cypress. <laughs> so I have read, I've read 23, excuse me. So I've read 22 plus Halloween Party. And um, yeah, so I'm working my way through there. I am over halfway through with the Perros. Um, But you know, pretty soon I'm going to start hitting more Marples. Things like that. A couple standalones in there. Um, so yeah, that is the Agatha Christie, or the, excuse me, the Hercule Perot mystery book tag for Alice. Um, I'm going to um, tag some, maybe some newer, some newer um, booktubers who may not have been around um, when Alice was doing this the first time. So I'm going to tag, and I'm doing this off the top of my head, Book Pat at Book Chat with Pat. Um, I am going to tag uh, Suey at Suey's Book Banner. I'm going to tag Sue Jackson. Of course, I'm going to tag Sue Jackson. Um, and uh, Ellen at Ellen Made Book Club. And this is all off the top of my head. Lindsay at Lindsay Reads. That's five. I'm going to go with five. I usually go with three. I'll go with five with this one. And if you don't know Alice, all her videos are still up there. Go, go watch her. She was a delight. And um, book two is not going to be the same without her, so. And now I'm getting real pumped. 
So we're gonna stop this now and I'm gonna go edit it and just throw it up immediately. So yeah, um, thanks. Talk to you next time, bye-bye.